pleased to welcome to the stage uh, Deputy Attorney General Sally Yates, whose commitment to this work is in just incredibly deep and passionate, and it's a pleasure to have her as a partner. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. John, it is such a privilege to be here today with you. I am so inspired by your leadership, by your determination, and by your stick to itiveness, if that's a word, to ensure that everyone in this country has a fair shot at a quality education. And I also want to thank Nick and everyone at the Vera Institute for hosting this event and for really the innovative work that Vera does in the correctional education field. I also want to say um, how grateful I am to our colleagues at the Bureau of Prisons who have not only supported this pilot project but are also doing such important work in strengthening correctional education within the federal system. And of course, our colleagues at BJA who are working with the Barrett Institute, providing technical assistance on this pilot and, and other issues as well. You know, the Second Chance Pell pilot program is a really big moment in the overall effort at criminal justice reform. Through this pilot, as John mentioned, over 12,000 inmates across our country will have access to post-secondary education through colleges and universities all over this country, including seven BOP facilities that ranges from Massachusetts to Texas. Through this pilot, these inmates are going to have opportunities when they are released that they would not have had before this pilot. Those opportunities will allow them to return to their communities in a way that gives them a chance, just a fighting chance, to be able to be successful when they leave prison. Now, I come to this issue with the perspective of a career prosecutor. As, as you heard, I joined the Justice Department back in 1989, and I've been a prosecutor for over 27 years. But now, as Deputy Attorney General, I have an opportunity to see the full range of the criminal justice system, overseeing the operations of DOJ. Now, unlike most state systems, in the federal system, we actually put the full range within one department. We have our law enforcement officers and our prosecutors and our correctional officers all within one department, the Department of Justice, all with a single responsibility for the criminal justice system, both from the beginning of an investigation all the way through to an individual's last day of his or her sentence. And so, through this, we have both the opportunity and the responsibility to seek justice and to make our community safe across the full spectrum of the criminal justice system. But to do that, we have to focus on more than just prosecution. We also have to focus on prevention and meaningful rehabilitation. All three prongs are essential because we all know no matter how many prisons we build, or how many long sentences that we impose, we are not going to jail our way into safer communities. Ensuring that those who are re-entering society from prison have the basic tools that they need to again just have a fighting shot at being successful on the outside is not only the right thing to do from a moral standpoint, but it's also the smart thing to do from a community safety standpoint because recidivism reduction is crime prevention. As everybody here knows, we have high recidivism rates in our country, but we don't have to accept that as a permanent condition. We have an opportunity to do something about that. And one of the ways to reduce recidivism is to give ac inmates access to quality education while they're in prison. As John already mentioned, those who participate in quality education programs in prison are 43% less likely to recidivate. So what does that mean? Not only does the individual not return to prison, and the obvious positive consequences for that individual and his or her family, but that also means there are fewer future victims of crime. It means our communities are safer, that we break the cycle of poverty in prison, and our country is stronger for this. And as if that weren't enough, investing and equipping inmates to be successful when they're released 
is the fiscally responsible thing to do as well. In a world of limited resources where we really have to choose the programs in which we invest in a way to make sure that our dollars make sense, that our spending makes sense, the research is clear that giving inmates access to education is a strong return on our dollar. As John has mentioned before, for every dollar that we spend in education in prison, we save four to five dollars later on reincarceration. But until we as a country are as committed to investing in preventing crime as we are in prosecuting it, we are not going to be as safe or as just as we can or should be. From my perspective, we have a responsibility to unleash the transformative power of education, to give individuals an opportunity to, to find themselves as something other than their worst moment. Through the Pell Grant pilot, inmates, many of whom suffer from a generational lack of access to education, can open doors to opportunities that were previously locked for them. Now, I'm a prosecutor, so I'm going to tell you to be sure when somebody violates the law, they need to be held accountable, and oftentimes that means going to prison. But a lifetime of punishment, often in the form of education and employment and housing barriers, doesn't serve justice, and it doesn't make us any safer. Earlier this year in April, I visited a federal prison near Houston where I had an opportunity there to talk with a number of women at the Bryan Correctional Institute. Many of them were, were in the latter stages of their sentences and they were readying themselves for return to their communities by engaging in a lot of the really strong BOP programs that we have, everything from um, vocational training to, to drug counseling. And during my visit, I was able to hear firsthand from them about their hopes and fears and concerns in returning to the communities. And you know what I heard there is what all of you all already know, all of you who are sitting here and who work in this area every day, and that is they're just like us. They want the same things that we want. They want a safe home and a job and a happy family, the very same things that everyone wants. It's our collective responsibility as a country to ensure that when they re-enter the community, they have the tools that they need in order to be able to be successful. It's the smart thing to do, it's the right thing to do, and it's one of the very best things that we can do for the safety of our communities. That's part of the reason why I'm so excited about the Pell Grant program, but I want to assure you that we're not stopping at the Pell pilot at the Department of Justice. We're working hard at DOJ to prioritize the broader issue of correctional education. As for the first time in decades, our prison population is beginning to decline, and so we have an opportunity to look at resources that previously were, in, you know, we were in an overstretched BOP system, we have a once in a lifetime opportunity, once in a lifetime, to be able to step back and take a comprehensive look at how we're approaching education within the Bureau of Prisons. And in the coming months, we're gonna be laying out a framework for a new and a better way to bring high quality education into the Federal Bureau of Prisons. I'm really proud of the progress that we've made so far, but I can tell you I'm even more excited about the work to come. Again, we are grateful for our partnership with the Department of Education, and I want to tell you we're going to continue to push, push hard at the Department of Justice to do everything we can to reduce recidivism, to expand opportunity, and to ensure that the men and women who are returning home are ready for their second chance. I hope that today's convening is not only enjoyable for you, but productive. And I look forward to all that we're going to be able to accomplish in the months and years ahead. Thanks so much.